You've got a lot of politicians heading that way or, or touring the impacted regions this week. What is your message to them? What has to happen as a priority, do you think, to get those tourism operators back on their feet? Yeah, without a doubt. The, the tourism industry has been focused uh, on supporting our community, um, providing accommodation for our emergency services uh, and reconnecting communities. One of the first things we need uh, is to support the service that is currently operating by water from Cairns to Port Douglas because the roads are cut um, to bring community members and to bring the emergency services staff in. So two reef operators have redeployed their reef vessels um, and they're running a daily service up and back from Port Douglas. That absolutely needs to be supported. Um, we're seeing cancellations continue to come through. Um, so we need to be providing support to the industry to let people know um, you can hold your booking, contact your operator, experiences are coming back online. Certainly for places like Mission Beach, open, unaffected and beautiful. For Cairns, vast majority of the experiences in the accommodation are as normal, including the Northern Beaches uh, and Palm Cove. Um, for Port Douglas, you will have to get there at the moment over the next couple of days by water, um, but we're hoping to see that come back. Um, so the state is really putting their support into the road connections. We've seen the Gillies reopen and the Coranda Range reopen, um, and that's incredible. And, and our, our thoughts uh, and our thanks go out to the emergency services crews, to the Ergon guys, um, to the ADF um, who are here at the moment. Community's got to come first. That's both you know our friends as well as our workforce. Um, they're coming back online. The tourism industry is recovering and we're going to need some support to get that message back out there. Hold your booking, contact your operator, um, come back into the region. Um, you can jump on SkyRail today and have a look at that Barren Falls in absolutely full flow, totally incredible. The rainforest experiences are reopening. It will take us a little while to get the Daintree back on. Um, and we've, we're connecting, as I said, Port Douglas via the Marine connection at the moment, hoping to open that road. So the key message to government is the industry is leaning in. Um, we want to support the four and a half thousand visitors that are already here in the region to have an incredible time. But we're going to need some support to get January back again, because February and March are typically quieter times in this part of the world. Mark, you're coming to us live from Cairns. You've obviously got your, your tourism operator hat on, which we can all understand. But just give us a, an insight into what it's been like being there in Cairns over the last few days. What's your, your week been like? What's it all looking like now in the wash-up? Look, it's been a really uh, different week. Um, we are one of the wettest places in Australia. In fact, the wettest town in Australia is here in the tropical north. Um, we don't usually see rainfall at this level, you know, well in excess of a metre um, over the 48-hour, 72-hour mark for some of our communities uh, is a record even for us. Um, we all did an incredible job. We kept everybody safe um, and we had everything locked down for ex-tropical cyclone Jasper to cross on Wednesday night. And the reports on Thursday morning were really positive. We knew that there was a little bit of damage up in the Dane Tree, um, but the operators were uh, in high spirits and we were welcoming our first cruise ship back on Friday um, only for Jasper to hang around um, and drop that incredible amount of water on our community, a record even for this part of the world. Um, so on Sunday, everything stopped. Um, and uh, the last couple of days have been a bit of a whirlwind for the operators. Um, firstly, our concern was with our staff, our communities. Uh, we've been rehoming um, people who have been displaced from their houses, including our own staff here at TTNQ, um, making sure that emergency services had everything they needed um, to provide that support, providing the transport connections, getting the helicopters up in the air um, to create footage like you're seeing um, from the air. Um, and, and now we're trying to help businesses who have got um, staff who have got bills to pay um, to to get back into operation. Uh, as I said, one in five staff in this region, something like 22,000 people in this little community are, um, are part of the tourism industry, but also getting out to the Great Barrier Reef. Um, we had our first operators out yesterday, um, uh, putting some beautiful images back out um, of what the reef looks like now. We were really pleased to see very little cyclone damage um, and it looks like the reef is holding up in really good stead, but it's the tourism operators who actually provide that eye on the reef um, to the federal government. So they need to be supported to keep getting out to the reef to do that monitoring, um, keep taking our visitors out, keep taking our scientists out. Um, so yeah, we're just calling on state and federal government at the moment um, to recognise and do what they did through COVID to really lean in and to support um, this region and the, uh, the operators themselves are raring to go. Um, last night, I got hundreds of emails from my operators um, on their current status. And I said more than 85% of them are either open or will be open by the weekend. Um, 
and looking after our visitors that are here. So it makes you really proud um, as a person who works in the tourism industry, works for the industry, um, when I see my operators really pitch in. Staff have got you know difficulties at home. Some of them are still getting the power put back on um, and they're pitching in uh, to get tourism kicked off in our community because they realise what an important role it plays. So yeah, it really fills you up um, and it's nice to have played a role in supporting the response with our emergency services also.